You're tuning into the chat right here on City TV. We're live from Alisa Hotel Northridge, inviting you to get interactive with the hashtag the chat. My name is AJ Akuako Sapo. Now, going into one of my favorite parts of the show where I get to have a one on one conversation with some pretty awesome individuals. Our personality today is none, one like none other. Uh, she is the inspiration behind our cocktail four spices of nikki and uh she is a storyteller a producer and a screenwriter and an award-winning one at that she's created some of the um one of the highest grossing nollywood movies uh sorry screen wrote some of the incredible dialogue and the, the screenplay behind one of the highest grossing Nollywood movies, uh, amongst many others, which is also shooting on Netflix, Living in Bondage. She has been behind some of the best productions uh, that I used to love back in the day. And she is also a storyteller of which she is doing a project that's going to see the whole world gather together and she's going to be one of the people behind this incredible project i'll be telling you about that ladies and gentlemen it's my um honor to welcome to the show nicole asi nuko yay yay hi yeah. nicole hi how has gone been Oh, Ghana has been amazing. <laughs> I love it so much. I want to move here. Yay! We, we love it. We, we welcome you. We Thank welcome you, you back. You're sorry, welcome. Nigeria. Sorry. <laughs> You've lost her. We've <laughs> won her. But uh, Nicole, welcome, welcome, welcome. Mm. And um, getting straight into it, I mean, you have done incredible things uh, with your words and your writing and written a screenplay for one of the highest grossing Hollywood movies, Living in Montage. Um, how has the Nollywood industry in particular sort of align themselves in order to get such human giants such as Netflix to be um, willing to take on the incredible contents that comes out of Nollywood? Um, I think that it's a little bit of the other way around. Okay. So the streaming giants obviously want to create a presence in Africa mm -hmm. and other places in the world. So like a Netflix is an American company. So since they want to have a footprint in Africa, yeah. they need authentic African stories. Of so it's only natural that they would gravitate to Nollywood, which is the biggest um, film industry that we have. Well, I'm going to get straight into that. But before mm -hmm. that, allowing uh, the caution bar, which sort of powers our cocktail <laughs> bar, bring the four spices of mm -hmm. Nikki, which is pineapple juice, passion fruit puree, rosemary water, and good day energy drink, our proud Amazing. sponsor. Thank so you. please... <laughs> um, before we get into the drinks, like getting okay. back into the conversation. Uh, Living in Bondage, I loved it. It was like the 11th uh, prize grossing movie in Nollywood. Um, how was it like writing the screenplay for such a big hit? Did you, did you expect it to, to sort of reach how high it did and also win yourself a screen, a screen writing award? No, I didn't think it would be... Like, I knew, obviously, the um, the importance of the classic of yeah. the original. So I knew that it was... I was writing something that was um, hopefully going to be iconic. But I just didn't think of the scale. And um, I just didn't... It was my first screenplay, so I didn't honestly see that it would be this thing that everybody would watch and like people would really resonate with because um, it's one thing to have a story in the 90s and then it's another thing to have it translate um, now of so course. I think um, I definitely didn't expect that. I like that. Now, um, how does a screenwriter or what, what is the creative process for a screenwriter such as yourself to get into the right frame of mind to write the dialogue and everything else in, involving such a project? Um, so it starts with, everything starts with the story, mm -hmm. the idea, like what is the idea, what is the, they say that if you have a good idea, you should be able to say it in one sentence. Okay. <laughs> so what is the idea, you start from there and then from there you then build it slowly, the characters, um, the twists, the turns, um, yeah, find out who your bad guy is, who your good guy is, um, what the character wants mm. from the story, what their goal is, what their desires are. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the process. I like that. I like that. Now, yeah. um, that was not your first foray into sort of um, that sector. You had already played a role as lead editor for Ndani TV, something mm -hmm. that I think a lot of us enjoy across the African continent mm -hmm. and have been behind some of the iconic productions that we love and, and, and watched. Mm -hmm. um, how was that period in your life being a part of Ndani TV? And what sort of productions were you working on directly? 
So I worked at Ndani TV, but I was the lead editor for mm. Ndani Lifestyle, okay. which was a subsect of Ndani TV. So it was a blog. Okay. So it was like um, building that digital space mm -hmm. and um, kind of like talking about the African entertainment and lifestyle and that kind of thing. Um, so it wasn't directly in Danny TV, mm -hmm. but we did have some lifestyle content. So okay. for instance, I created the drinking show um, in Danny TGIF. I like TGIF. <laughs> yeah, because it was so boring. <laughs> and, and you know, just in general, just sometimes like when you have interviews and people are a bit stiff. Yeah. So you have a bar <laughs> and then you have a drink and then it just got like, you know, um, it gets a little bit more fun. Yeah. So that's kind of the concept behind that. Um, I also worked um i was at indani when they were filming um things like giddy up and rumor has it but i wasn't a producer on that okay. um i was a producer on real talk like a chat show I like that, yes. um, and yeah i hosted that for a little bit wonderful well. and um now getting into you winning screenwriter at amvcas uh, how did you feel like when you you were you were nominated and then how was the process winning that particular one when i was nominated i was Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, yeah, I was just very humble, just very surprised, um, very, very excited. And then winning was just like, it was strange. It was honestly like, um, like an out of body experience. Like you always like you pray or you like hope that you, you're recognized for your work, but it's one thing to pray and then it's another thing to see. So, um, it was wonderful. I like that. Now, uh, the projects that you've worked on, um, mm -hmm. Living in Bondage, Rattlesnake, are old Nigerian classics. Yeah. Now, how is it like, because classics, people love, people remember, is their childhood, mm -hmm. for some. Um, did you feel apprehensive touching the screenplay of that? Because are you afraid that it might mur the story, it might change it? Like, how did yeah. you approach these two projects? Yeah, of course. Like, that's the first thing you think, like, ah, <laughs> Twitter, they're going to come from my neck. You know what I mean? Because people have these, um, experiences and then you don't want to mess it up yeah. and you don't want to be the one who messes yeah. it up <laughs> but <laughs> I think I've learned early on that you can't please everyone True. so you can only just do your best and so for living in bondage I think the main thing was that we wanted to still it's a se it was a sequel it wasn't a remake mm -hmm. so therefore we had a lot of leeway to you know expand the story and to just like um, take it to our own place so that was um, fun to do. With Rattlesnake, um, it's a remake, um, but a lot of people found that it was not mir mirroring the original. Mm. But then again, with remakes, you're allowed to remake it. Yeah. So it's not necessarily just, remakes can be different. You can have a remake that is similar to um, the story. So like a Disney story, like Lion King, they're yes. never gonna change the story. Right. Or you could have a remake where they actually like change the narrative, like the Joker mm. or Batman, you know, everything is literally different. So that's what we did with Rats of Snakes. I so. like that. Yeah. Now, uh, movies such as that, like here in Ghana, the, the, la the first thing people say about creating movies or even remakes such as that is funding. Mm -hmm. Now, how easy, like, us Ghanaians looking at the Nollywood industry think you guys have it all figured out, like mm -hmm. everything is there, but how easy is it getting funding for, I would assume, such large projects such as the movies you've worked on? Um, so to be honest, because I'm a screenwriter, you, you don't know, really, I don't really, uh, I'm not really the one looking for money, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So the producers, the executive producers, those are the people that are sourcing funding, if I'm being very honest. But I do know a little bit about it and I do know that, um, I think partners and brands are now seeing the value mm. of these kind of partnerships and so seeking funding is not as difficult as it was before mm. um, but again it's about access it's about who you know it's about your portfolio mm. so it will be hard for somebody who's never done movies before to get funding from a big brand mm. but if you had a movie and you have something under your belt it's easier to have those conversations okay so first and foremost start it Started. then maybe the next one will be will be better yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, coming to your personal project, uh, The Writer's Room, tell us about that. What led into the creation of that and, and how is it going so far? Right. So The Writer's Room is essentially a platform for young writers, um, 
in Nigeria and Africa to basically come together just like build a community because I found that after living in bondage I would get loads of DMs on Instagram and like young writers just asking me like oh how do you do this or how did you write this how did you get into this and the thing is like I didn't actually have the answers mm. so like it would be like you know your nobody can have your blueprint to success so like I wouldn't actually know a lot of the times what I'm doing to be honest with you True. so I think with writing comes a lot of like self-doubt a lot of questioning if you're doing the right thing so what we needed was a community so with the writers room it's somewhere that you can come and you can ask questions and people can support you and also um, the goal is to offer you know script development um, workshops um, building on people's craft and stuff like that and giving them resources um, because at the end of the day a lot of us didn't go to I studied law a lot of us didn't go to film school we don't really know what we're doing so mm. um, I think having a community that just um, helps um, writers with their craft can go a long way to help the industry now touching on what I mean doing law how easy was the was a progression from what you studied to now finding your way into writing and content creation and storytelling um, it wasn't very difficult because I wasn't very good at law. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't very good at all. <laughs> so I was always good at writing. Mm. I was always good at like blogging and um, finding new cafes and taking pictures of, you know, my coffees and stuff like that. So um, later on, I would find that's what you call content curation. But before we just used to do it because that's what we like to do. Yeah. So I think I just did a lot of side things enough to you know um eventually start pursuing that um so after law school um i got um, my nysc which is like national service in nigeria um i did it in a newsroom so i worked for channels television oh. so that was my first job and so from channels television i went into advertising from advertising i went into indani and from indani then you went to Dubai. Went to Dubai. Now, let's move to Dubai. Like uh, in, in, in October of this year, the whole world will gather in Dubai for the World Expo. Um, yeah. Now, this is something that is, happens every five years. Yes. Uh, and Dubai won it. And then, well, if it wasn't for COVID, it would have happened last year. But yeah. then it's happening this year. Yes. Now, you are a storyteller and content curator on yes. this. I mean, that is incredible if you think about it. Because you're literally going to be wave or weaving stories of different countries from across the world who are all converging yeah. tell me how the work is like right. living working in dubai on this project and how it's been so far for the last what three years yeah so yeah so um i moved to dubai in 2018 so this is a project that they've been planning for the last five years wow. the dubai government um the uae government and it is, like you said, it's going to bring 192 countries wow. together. Um, and the, I think the most exciting part of it is the scale. I don't think a lot of people understand that like Dubai has built a whole city yeah. um, and countries have their own pavilions and it's going to be this amazing six month event. Um, so yeah, it starts in October 2021 and it ends in March um, 2022. Um, so I think, so my role essentially is I work with countries to help um, come up with the experiences of their pavilion. Wow. So what happens when you enter the pavilion? Do you see a massive like shark? <laughs> Do you see like, you know, some dancers? Like what's the experience? What's the narrative? Amazing. So it's pretty cool. Amazing. Now that is something that I, I, I honestly cannot wait for. I'm sure Ghana is featured in there. Of course. Uh, Ghana has an amazing pavilion, but how, I'm not going to, like? I'm not going to reveal it because <laughs> I don't know if Ghana has revealed it. Um, um, but it is beautiful and it is business oriented, but at the same time cultural. And um, it's actually one of the most um, beautiful pavilions that I've seen. Oh, wow. Come on. Come yeah, through yeah. Ghana. <laughs> but for someone who might not, might be the first time hearing about the World Expo, um, yeah. what does it entail, really? Uh, people come in there to yeah. showcase their countries? Is that, yeah, is that basically so it? Yeah, essentially. So um, expos are like um, the Olympics mm. for innovation mm -hmm. and for ingenuity it celebrates like human brilliance so mm -hmm. um expos have been going on since the 18th century wow. um so there are things that you might know that are really popular that were um featured at an expo like for instance um the typewriter came out of an expo ketchup came out of an expo yeah so america like in their pavilion they had ketchup and that was the first time the world had got to have ketchup and then it became ketchup 
you know um, I'll wow. give you another example like France um, in a very long time ago the entrance to their pavilion was the Eiffel Tower and then they repurposed it and took it to France so now it's Eiffel Tower so it was iconic wow yeah so it makes things that the country is doing more iconic because it has more of a global stage now finally new projects I'm sure there must be some exciting new projects that you're working on and would love to know about it so what are you currently writing um I'm writing two films okay um one is a psychological fantasy thriller. Okay, alrighty. Yeah, I can't tell you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and the other is um, also a thriller, but it's like it's like a drama, a drama thriller. I like, yeah. I like, I like. Is yeah. it are any of them a remake? No. Okay, so okay, we love. We're doing originals now. I love it, I love it, I love yeah. it. But yes, we're looking forward to it. We're mm -hmm. hoping that it will be released on a streaming platform so we can be able to all watch it. Yes. Or at least it will, be, it will come to our cinemas at some point in time, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Definitely. But thank you so much, Nicole, for coming thank through. You. I hope you enjoy Ghana and you make it a, a permanent thing every summer in Ghana. Yeah. We love it. Love it. <laughs>